if you'd like to try some easy art activities to relax at home, I'm so excited today to share with you 15 art therapy exercises and mindful art journaling activities to help spark your creativity and get you creating at home. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Cynthia with Mindful Creative Muse. And here on this channel, we share creative and calming practices for self-care, largely mindful art practices, also known as meditative art. So today we'll be doing something a little bit different. I'll be sharing some of my work from an art therapy group that, that I attend with some friends and a registered art therapist, as well as some mindful art journaling prompts and sharing some approaches that I take to create without judgment and giving myself permission. I'll be creating another video later about the differences between mindful art and art therapy, because this definitely is not art therapy that we do here at Mindful Creative Muse. So I'll be sharing more information about the benefits of mindful art. Um, for now, let's dive right in. This first prompt might look familiar to you. I call this draw the breath. It is a drawing breath meditation. And I do have a whole second video all about this. I'll link it in the description box below if you're curious to hear about the entire process. It's pretty simple. You can do it in just a couple of minutes and it's really great to become present with your breath, with the moment and to create images from that. So it's great to really calm down the nervous system and to just de-stress so you can do this in a few minutes on your lunch break or if you don't have a lot of time. All of these art therapy exercises and mindful art journaling prompts I'll be sharing with you today are invitations. The focus is on the process, not the final product. And so with that, everything will look and feel very different for everyone. That's because we're having our own process. I'm going to bring this up a little bit closer. So this next prompt, the second prompt is where do you feel stuck? So this is with acrylic as well as micron pens, um, some white oil-based pens and markers as well. And this is slightly smaller. I want to show two examples because I did explore this prompt twice. So this is another example, which as you can see, looks very different. So this again, it is that art therapy exercise prompt. Where do you feel stuck? With any of these prompts, you can also explore them via creative writing, poetry, soul collage, which I also share on this channel and in my online courses. You can explore it through movement, through sound. There's so many different ways. It's really whatever is speaking to you. So I hope any of these art therapy exercises or mindful art journaling prompts spark your interest to explore that in whatever way it means for you. This next prompt can really be interpreted in two ways. It can be in the form of a question, where do you get your strength? It also can just be interpreted as growth or transformation. So having that as an intention before you begin, considering growth or transformation in your life. As if many of you have seen my other meditative watercolor doodling videos or my mandala, mandalas and mindful mandalas I create and teach. This is similar to that in that I began in the center and worked my way out. And so you might notice that for yourself as well with anything that you create, you'll have your own marks that you might return to again and again. Artists notice this with different motifs as they create collections of work uh, or create their signature style. So you might just notice that when you are creating. I wanted to briefly show another image still with the same prompt of where do you get your strength? This is with charcoal markers and colored pencils. So again, I just wanted to show how different it can look and feel with the exact same prompt. Um, and it'll definitely vary with in between individuals and also within the same individual. So you can always return back to these prompts over and over again um, and see what's shifting and changing for you. So I love with many of these prompts that they're really simple and they're open to interpretation, which for me gives a lot of freedom as I explore these or as I share them with my students. So again, so much about mindful art journaling is about giving yourself permission to create and express yourself without judgment. So this next prompt is simply one word and that word is treasure. So I created two again with this. This is with charcoal as well as the micron pens, a um, little bit of colored pencil in this area. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit closer. So again, for me, you can see that continuation of these organic shapes and lines. Um, this is another symbol that seems to come up often in my artwork recently, um, that sort of bead or thread uh, coming down. So again, this prompt is treasure. 
So I did explore this one twice as well. So I'm going to show this other one. And I, when I was working on this, I was moving the page all around. So that's something I do often with my mandalas, if, especially if I'm working in a round shape, I seem to turn it quite frequently. But even in a square or rectangular journal, I am frequently turning the page to see it from different perspectives. And um, that might be rooted from a lot of my original abstract painting uh, experience and trainings because very frequently with abstract work, there's that focus of rotating the page and changing your perspective. So again, this is still that treasure uh, prompt. So another one word prompt here, this one is possibilities. Now this image is actually a much smaller second piece from a larger uh, work that I explored and played around with. I think it was a 16 by 20 and it was on black paper. Um, so this was one image or symbol that was in the other one that I felt especially drawn to that really uh, clarified for me what I was feeling around possibilities. So that's something you can also do. Again, you can play with these prompts multiple times. Um, you can find a small subsection within one piece and do that again. I could also work with just this image and then make a second one, um, expanding, sort of allowing that conversation to finish. Um, so if I were to expand across the same idea. This is one of my favorite art therapy exercises that we explored with my group. And this is larger. Um, in a larger journal pad, still with watercolors and the micron and another marker. Again, that's just the style that I've been really drawn to, especially lately, but the media can look very different for you as well as your approach and your style. Um, so this prompt, uh, as you can see, it starts to incorporate some words as well as with images. This could be a fun one to explore with soul collage as well as writing afterwards. Anyone that's familiar with soul collage uh, knows the writing process afterwards. And again, I share that here on the channel. So this art therapy exercise prompt is what are your values? So it can be really nice. I notice anytime I explore mindful art journaling prompts or questions, I often call them creative writing prompts. Um, anytime I explore that, it's nice to give myself some space to sit with it. In this instance, the question or prompt of what are your values, I made a longer list of many values and then chose the three that were most speaking to me. And I only chose them after I already had um, created the image. So I sort of let them simmer as I was creating the image. And then because I had these three panels, decided to include the three words. So I only mentioned that to say there's absolutely no right or wrong. This was just my experience. It might look and feel very different for you. Um, so you could explore just as ideas you could explore different artworks with each word. So this is another one I'll get to later, but this is one of my meditative watercolor doodling practices. So you can see I included just one word and intention for gratitude on this one. Um, so there's, again, endless possibilities here. I have this also on the one page, but what I'm thinking of doing is I will probably cut these out and then I will either frame them all together or frame them individually. Um, so it can be nice to create on one page and then break it up later. I could also have um, cut into this. Many times I mention as a prompt, if you are not liking something that you're working with to break free of that, you can also just start to cut or rip um, what you've created as well to create something entirely new. So total side topic, but a little mindful art tip there. So we will move on now to meditative watercolor doodling. So I'm going to show a few different ways you can approach these. Um, so this is really a combination of my mindful mandalas practice that I started and created several years ago. I have other videos about that that I'll link below. Again, with these are watercolors and again using that micron pen. I typically begin at the center and I lay the paint down first and then make the marks so really so the paint can inform the marks I'm making. So you might be able to see here there's this separation. So this is where I have the purple watercolor down and this is actually just the blank page in the background but you can see kind of this line or mark that's created. So um, there's also sometimes a cauliflower, what it's called a cauliflower effect that can happen with the paint that I love working wet into wet. And so I really accentuate that with my marks. But much of this practice is about 
moving very slowly, giving yourself some space. It can be great to de-stress and relax. Again, there's no right or wrong. Um, and you can always make the marks first and then paint on top of it. This is just my preferred method recently. So moving on, there's another approach, which I mentioned briefly earlier, which is you can do the meditative watercolor doodling, but you can have it with an intention before you begin or as you create it. You can see these different marks I'm making here. There are um, some dots that are being incorporated, lots of organic lines, having some areas where it might be darker filled in and then having some space. And again, varying the type of lines, whether they're smooth or jagged, because of what I'm seeing in the image and because of what I'm feeling. So I also have a Pinterest board, if you're on Pinterest, that I use for inspiration sometimes for mark making. So I will link that below if you want to check that out. So then lastly, still playing around with these meditative watercolor doodlings and doodling mindful art exercises uh, is to think of or reflect on a relationship in your life or a situation in your life. Um, it could be something that you're struggling with at the moment. It might just be something you feel really grateful for and excited about. So giving yourself about five minutes before you even begin at all, you could have eyes closed or open just to reflect on that situation or that person. You might want to notice how you're feeling. I offer guided meditations regarding this and I have a lot more in my courses that'll walk you through it, but I like to use that as an initial prompt. And so this, um, image, then I create marks as I'm feeling. I can let that thought go. I'm not intentionally, consciously then thinking about the marks I'm making. I'm just allowing that to come out still with this container or intention of creating a meditative watercolor doodle. So I, so I can sort of let my brain rest. I'm not having to think about well, what am I going to create completely. I know I'm going to be creating in this circle. I know the materials I'm using. I've had this time to reflect on this relationship or this situation, and now I'm giving myself permission to make marks without judgment. And so you can see that this um, looks and feels very different than these first two. They'll always change, but uh, what I'm especially curious about is I started to have these new marks that hadn't appeared in my previous watercolor doodles that I see as sort of a suture or a stitch. So you'll notice that you'll have new things that might arrive for you. And then you can always do a writing process after this. Again, I have journaling prompts and a whole mindful mandalas uh, affirmation process that I share in my courses, but you can uh, decide to just journal for five minutes afterwards to give yourself space. You can be curious about how you felt while you made this, um, perhaps what you see afterwards when you look at it, it's entirely up to you. And this is one that's still in progress, so I haven't spent as much time. So you can do these meditative watercolor doodling really quickly, you can spend more time on them. I spent a considerable different amount of time between these two. I think I had an extra 20 minutes or so on this one here. So what I love about this practice as well is even if you dip your toes in and you do a little bit, you can always come back and add to it. So I'll be starting a 30 day mindful art uh, challenge here that I hope you'll join me for, or if you're seeing this later that you rewatch it with me. But sometimes if I come to a blank piece of paper or a blank canvas and I don't know what to create, then I can step in really quickly. I already have this piece that I can then immediately start making marks. This next art therapy exercise shared in my group that I attend is really one of my favorites as well. And this is the invitation to make a piece of artwork using beginning with and using a letter of the alphabet. So I chose the letter O. It started to transition for me into the letter C as I moved through the marks and then let go of that completely. So I'm just going to rotate this around. As I worked, I was constantly turning the page. Um, when I finished, I sort of ended up that this feels right for me, that this would be the right way up. But again, um, that's totally open to interpretation. This is another constriction, right? It's a creative limitation. So if we come to the page and I have that intention or that prompt of choose a letter of the alphabet to begin making marks with, it can help alleviate any stress or pressure that I may have on myself coming to a blank piece of paper or blank canvas of what am I going to create today. It also will be new every time you come to it. Again, there, you can explore this so many times, even if you explore the same letter, it will 
uh, inevitably come out different and look different when you come back to it later. Um, and then again, I did a writing process after this just to, I love to make meaning of the marks I make and to delve in deeper and understand why I made some of those marks. So that's my preference. That's something I share in a lot of my courses and my other online work. Um, but that's definitely up to you if you're curious about some of the marks you're making, what they might mean to you. There's different ways you can kind of step into that. So this prompt is actually an expressive arts activity. Um, it began with sensing into the body, noticing sensations in the body. This prompt and focus was around the spine. So you can choose any body part that you'd like to focus on for that time, use for your meditation, if you'd like to call it that. Um, what I often recommend is if you're sensing into the body to notice what's speaking to you loudest at that time. So Oftentimes, something that's speaking to you loudest um, might be asking for your attention. In this case, the prompt was given specifically around using the spine, um, but you can vary it every single time depending on what's calling you most. So this, again, as you notice with my materials, doesn't vary too much as far as mark making. These are with watercolors and micron pens. Um, but what I love about this is I wanted to show how this made a week before my next image, and even though they're entirely different prompts, how they informed each other. So this prompt here, which was delightful or blessings is the prompt. Delightful or blessings was the art therapy exercise prompt. Um, you can see how these two, at least I see when I look at them, um, they have really similar color palettes. They have really similar shapes, really similar marks. It was almost like coming back to the same conversation a few days or a week later. I think these were made within three or four days of each other. And I didn't consciously think about it until after I had sort of this lotus flower created that then I instantly remembered, oh my goodness, that was so similar to my um, spine drawing and sensation meditation that I did. So I just find that so fascinating. I always love being surprised by that. And I think that when we create from a space of allowing ourselves to make marks without judgment and with giving ourselves permission to do that, um, I often call it collaborating with chance. One of my professors, art professors said that many years ago and uh, collaborating with chance for me means that there's spaciousness, there's openness to be surprised by what wants to come out. Um, there's not as much rigidity. I'm not trying to create a certain thing ahead of time. And that actually offers a lot of freedom for me and for many of my students. The restriction or limitation is within the prompts or within the materials. So we're not overwhelmed with our decisions, um, but we can still be surprised with what we're making. So I'm just going to come in a little bit closer here. I just want to show some of the intricacies in the line work. Um, this again is similar to the other threads I used with that kind of tree twisting shape. These are a little more straight, but in this case, I focused on that outlining first and then made the marks. Um, and again, still playing around with some of that cauliflowering in the wet on wet technique um, and then allowing myself to make the shapes from that. So I had no idea I was planning on creating a lotus flower here. Um, a lotus flower didn't come to me when I considered that prompt of delightful or blessings. Actually, what came up for me is I saw a like flame, a spark of flame, which represented joy and um, having aliveness and passion. So that's why I started with these colors and it still has that kind of flame-esque uh, shape to it that I see, but really how that unfolded and transformed as I was making it is part of why I love these practices, because again, we just don't know what is going to come out. And this really allows us to express what might be resting beneath the surface without necessarily using words, also without needing to understand it. Um, again, if you're working with an art therapist, they'll have other tools and ways to help you process that. But this work that we're doing focusing on mindful art journaling is not art therapy. It really is giving ourselves space to create without judgment, giving ourselves permission, and then making meaning of our marks for ourselves if that's something additional that you'd like to do. So we're coming close to the end here, almost the last prompt. Again, this is two parts for the images. This is a really fun um, 
deep, lovely, expressive arts activity that I love. This is what I like to call mapping out your year. So, so far we're in the month of September, 2020. So each dot represents a month. This is January, moving through September. And I allowed myself here to make marks using colors and shapes based on how I was feeling from what I remember moving through the year. Um, and that's totally open to interpretation. Again, we have our own ways of making marks, choosing colors. Red might mean something different to me than it might mean to you. Um, so choosing to just focus on your own work here. Um, but this is what I began with. I spent a shorter amount of time here, um, maybe just five to 10 minutes making these marks and then moved into the second part, which I'll show here in a moment. So mapping out your year, moving from this, to this. I spent more time here, about 20 to 30 minutes, using that initial image as just another prompt. So stepping away from being as specific, I'm mapping out my year, um, to looking at that original image that I created and giving myself more space and time to expand upon that. Again, sort of continuing that thought. Um, and so here I'm using uh, watercolors and micron pens, just those two things. I love that it's really simple. I'm a minimalist at heart and in many ways in my life. And I also like really minimal supplies with my art. And you can see sort of the connection here, right? So it kind of follows that same um, tracing. If I were to trace this initial shape, kind of this con congested or this larger part here, dipping down and then coming back up. It's very similar, but in many ways, there's a lot of differences as well. What I love about this is that it can start to transform even as you create it. Um, I can choose to transform certain parts as I'm creating it, and the same goes for you as well. But again, you can do this with words, you could do it with soul collage, you could create a similar to a vision board, there's lots of different options, but that intention or the art therapy exercise or expressive arts exercise prompt is mapping out your year. So this is our 15th art therapy exercise and mindful art journaling prompt. I do have a bonus one uh, if you've made it this far here at the end in a moment. So this one, this prompt is transitions. And so I'm just going to kind of start at the top so you can see, I'll come in a little bit closer. This prompt is transitions. And what immediately came to me, that darker purple line that's here in the center was sort of the image that I had originally. So that's how I like to work. I often, when I hear a question or a prompt, I'll sort of have a spark of an image that will come up and then I follow that impulse. That may or may not happen for you. It's similar to when I share um, meditations or guided visualizations. Some people are visual, um, some people might hear something you may not have anything come up. You might just have a felt sense about something or notice your sensations. Um, you may just come to the page with that prompt and allow that impulse of whatever wants to come out to be created. Um, again, everybody has their own process. This is also a piece that I rotated a lot as I was working. So I love how in this direction, it sort of reminds me of a landscape, again, with that transitions theme. Um, for me, I can still feel into transitions and having this kind of new growth and transformation. Um, but I definitely encourage this rotating and moving of your page as you're working or afterwards as well um, to just notice how different it might feel in each area. And then just from uh, an aesthetic standpoint, because with mindful art journaling, there's that balance of you're creating just purely to create for the process, but also kind of playing around with different marks and aesthetics. You may notice as you rotate it, that something feels like it's, you know, something else is needed and you might want to go in. So you might decide, actually, I feel like I want something in that corner. And then um, by rotating it, it gives you just another perspective. So that prompt is uh, transitions. So you made it this far, 15 art therapy exercises and mindful art journaling prompts. You're here at the end. I hope that you have found some inspiration sparked or some things that you wanna try. This is a final one I wanted to share with you. And this one is transformation. It also can be considered as paths. Um, so there's so many different ways, but I began with transformation. And I actually, for me, I um, had the image of a tree. 
So you can see here that tree kind of coming together up and out. And this is another one I rotated throughout. And what I love about this one especially is in each way I see something entirely different and new that can still connect me back to the prompt. So in one position I see the tree, in this position I sort of see two paths diverging. So having that transformation, having two paths um, as it moves. Here I see this as another tree, but um, I sort of see it as a masculine and a feminine. So with this tree, I see this as very um, masculine coming up and out. And then with this tree, I see it as being more feminine, rooted, grounding, coming down into the earth. That's just how I interpret this. Again, everybody's totally different. Um, and then here I see a sunset, which I love thinking about that transformation, how the world is transformed every day as the sun arises brand new. You may begin to notice for yourself that you have certain materials, certain symbols or images and marks that you feel drawn to, that you return to again and again. It can change over time. And so that's something as you create more and more mindful art or as you explore more art therapy exercises or expressive arts activities, you might notice patterns, themes, or threads. And again, that's very different whether you're doing art therapy or mindful art. So I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of those different art therapy exercises, as well as some of the mindful art journaling prompts. I hope that you feel inspired to perhaps play and create in whatever form that means for you with any of those questions or the prompts. If anything sparked something in you to create, I consider that a win. So I would love, love, love to hear in the comments below which prompt or question you're excited to play around with first or which one you've already played with. And if you have any others, any other curiosities or questions or go-to prompts that you like to use to get started, especially if you're feeling stuck with a blank page or a blank canvas, I would absolutely love to hear that and have it shared in comments so we can support each other here in this community. As I mentioned throughout the video, I'm going to have links below in the description regarding different art materials I used, as well as the Pinterest board for mark making inspiration, as well as some of my other courses if you're interested in diving deeper or having more support. There's also going to be links to some of the other videos I mentioned so you can look at that process of drawing a breath or mindful mandalas or soul collage. There's so much here. And what I'm so excited about that I mentioned briefly in the middle of the video, if you heard that, is that I'm going to be starting a 30-day mindful art challenge here on the channel. We're going to be starting that next week on September 24th. So that really is where I'm going to be sharing videos daily for 30 days about different mindful art practices that I'll be doing in my journal and creating. So I hope that it's a way, one, for accountability for myself. <laughs> it's leading up to my 40th birthday on October 24th. So it'll be a celebration that 30th day. And then two, for us to create together, for it to spark inspiration for you and your own creative practice. I know that 30 days of creating consistently every day can be a challenge. That's why it's a challenge. Um, and also for us to hold that really loosely and softly. So you may pop in, you might watch some of the videos, you might watch them all, you might create a couple of days, you might create on all of the days. Everything is absolutely wonderful the way that it is. Um, I hope that you find it supportive no matter when you find them, whether it's during the challenge or if you see this video many years later, I hope that it supports your creative practice. Um, it's really my mission and intention to give people permission to create freely and without judgment and that so many of these practices can help us to de-stress relax, be in the present moment, and allow ourselves to express who we are and what we really want to express in the world. So I look forward to sharing that challenge with you and connecting with you more during that time. And if you're ready now to dive in, you can move on to the next video. P.S. Definitely like this video if you like it. That lets me know to make more like this. And if you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification, you will be notified when we release new videos, especially for that upcoming 30-day art challenge. Okay, now we'll move on to the next video.